So, you've made a choice to buy an OLED over a traditional LCD TV, but now you're faced with yet another tough decision. Should you get a W OLED or QD OLED? Hi, I'm Marco from Ratings.com. The OLED market has continued to expand and diversify in recent years. We now have OLED TVs that rival the brightness of flagship LCD TVs from years past. But not all OLEDs are created equal, and the market is as confusing as ever. You'll find both W OLEDs and QD OLEDs within the same brand lineup, and even between different sizes of the same model. Today, we'll break down the differences between these two OLED panel types, so you can figure out which is better for different use cases, understand where the market is headed, and make the best buying decision for yourself. What are W OLED and QD OLED? W OLED and QD OLED are the two main types of OLED panels on the market today. OLED, of course, stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. Unlike LCD TVs, OLEDs don't have a backlight. Instead, they use organic materials that generate light through an electrical current, allowing for pixel-level light control and exceptionally high contrast. For a long time, the only OLED TVs available were W OLEDs, spearheaded by LG Display in early 2010s. QD OLEDs didn't enter the picture until 2022, when Samsung Display introduced its own take on the OLED panel, starting with the release of the Samsung S95B and Sony A95K. The W OLED, or white OLED, is so called because its main emissive layer is made up of OLED material that emits white light. That white light then passes through red, green, and blue color filters, with a fourth subpixel passing through unfiltered white light. QD OLEDs, on the other hand, use an OLED layer that emits blue light. And instead of color filters, they use quantum dots, putting the QD in QD OLED, to convert the blue light of the OLED layer into red and green light. W OLEDs can produce very bright whites, but typically struggle with bright saturated colors, since the intensity of the white subpixel dilutes the other subpixels. The filters also make it harder to achieve bright colors, because a lot of the light is blocked by the filter or lost to internal reflections within the various layers of the panel. To overcome that optical inefficiency, W OLEDs require more energy, which is one of their downsides. To help solve some of these inefficiencies, LG introduced MLA technology in 2023. Thanks to its MLA layer, the G3 saw a notable increase in brightness over its predecessor. By placing billions of microscopic lenses over the OLED pixels, MLA layers were meant to recapture and focus light outward. This effectively increased light output without increasing power consumption, with the bonus of even better viewing angles. But MLA comes with its own downside, reflection handling. Adding a bunch of tiny lenses to the panel also adds more reflectivity, which in turn leads to slightly raised black levels when there's ambient light in the room. So not a perfect solution. Quantum dots, meanwhile, are incredibly light efficient. They can take blue light and convert it to red or green without needing an electrical charge, allowing QD OLED panels to produce bright, saturated colors more efficiently than W OLED panels, MLA layer or not. We can see that the two panels use entirely different subpixel structures. QD OLEDs use a combination of RGB subpixels in a triangular formation to produce pure white. Meanwhile, W OLEDs typically have an RWBG pixel structure, relying on the white subpixel to display pure white at higher luminance levels. It's a different story, however, when looking at the vibrancy of colors. QD OLEDs are still largely undefeated for color volume and color brightness. If we look at the gamut rings on the LG C5 compared to the Samsung S90F, colors on the C5 are noticeably desaturated at high luminance levels versus the S90F. We can get even more insight here by looking at the spectral power distribution of each panel. The Samsung has much more defined blue, green, and red peaks compared to the LG, which means better color purity, which in part leads to its better color volume. At first glance, it might seem like QD OLED solves a lot of the issues with W OLED technology. They're more efficient and produce brighter, more saturated colors. So what's the catch? Why haven't all manufacturers accepted quantum dots as their lord and savior? Well, QD OLED panels have a major Achilles heel, ambient black level rays. This is where W OLEDs really have an advantage over QD OLEDs. Unlike W OLEDs, QD OLEDs don't have a polarizer. That's by design. 
It's why you can often see a purple tint on QD OLEDs in rooms with ambient light, and why black levels look raised in those same conditions. The other reason you see this black level raise on QD OLEDs is that the ambient light in simple terms activates the quantum dots, which reflect that incoming light back to some degree. W OLEDs, on the other hand, include a circular polarizer that cuts down the effect of ambient light and significantly reduces black level rays. The downside of these polarizers is that it also cuts the TV's brightness by approximately 50%. That's likely the reason QD OLEDs don't have them. We talked a bit about the raised blacks on the Samsung S95F in our review of that model, and how its matte coating makes it more apparent. But the matte coating isn't the primary cause. QD OLEDs already struggle with black rays, regardless of coating. However, while a matte coating diffuses more light, resulting in better reflection handling with direct light sources, it also contributes to reduced black depth with a flatter looking image in ambient light. Matte versus glossy coatings are really a matter of preference and depend heavily on viewing conditions. But the combo of a matte coating and a QD OLED panel makes these matte coated OLEDs even less suitable for rooms with ambient light. So if you're going to be watching your TV in brighter rooms or during the day and having deep blacks and contrast is important to you, arguably one of the main reasons to get an OLED in the first place, then you're better off with a W OLED. Ultimately, there's always a trade-off, and manufacturers are placing a bet on what matters most, increased light output and brightness, or maintaining black levels in ambient light. That is, until the LG G5 came along. It basically solves the efficiency and light output issues of older W OLEDs without compromising on black levels in ambient light. That's because it features the latest innovation on the W OLED formula, LG's new primary RGB tandem panel. Previous generation W OLEDs feature a three stacked OLED panel design, with, in simplified terms, a yellow layer sandwiched between two blue layers. The new primary RGB tandem panel divides the yellow layer into separate red and green layers stacked in tandem with the blue layers, hence primary RGB tandem. This allows the panels to achieve even greater light output with less power consumption. LG claims it gets about 33% brighter with 20% less energy consumption compared to last year's models. In our own observation, the power consumption of the 77-inch G5 we tested is not that far off from our 65-inch C5, despite being larger, and our brightness measurements speak for themselves. The G5 hits noticeably higher peak and sustained SDR and HDR brightness measurements than its predecessor. The SPD chart of the G5 also shows that it's able to achieve better color purity with more defined red and green spikes compared to W OLEDs without the RGB tandem design. Despite this new chapter in W OLED design, QD OLEDs are still better than most W OLEDs for color, but the competition has now gotten very close. And because these panels achieve higher brightness without an MLA layer, they also maintain more contrast in settings with ambient light. This is likely one of the reasons why LG has moved away from using MLA on their OLEDs, and we expect to see more of these RGB tandem panels going forward. So far, we've covered aspects like brightness, color, and reflections. But what about longevity? Are there any differences in reliability from one panel over the other? We've had a handful of W OLEDs and QD OLEDs on our accelerated longevity test, but it's hard to draw concrete conclusions about whether one type is more reliable than the other. That's because every manufacturer implements things a little differently, including compensation cycles. And as we know, compensation cycles play an important role in longevity and preventing burn-in. But we have observed that regardless of OLED type, newer generation panels tend to outperform their older generation counterparts. For example, first generation Samsung QD OLEDs on our test degraded much quicker than their second generation counterpart. Ultimately, if you're buying a newer generation OLED and you watch varied content, burn-in isn't something you have to worry about either way. OLED technology, as we've seen, continues to improve with each generation, whether we're talking about W OLEDs or QD OLEDs. And that's exciting. But despite being the best premium TV technology out there at the moment, 
OLEDs are still a niche product in the broader TV market. Competing mini LED TVs are often a better value prospect for the average consumer. Since the cost of OLED is high, not just for the consumer to buy, but also for manufacturers to produce, it's hard to say exactly what the future holds for the OLED market, especially when the cost of micro LEDs and other technologies we haven't seen yet eventually comes down. However, if you do decide to jump into the wonderful world of OLED ownership, you'll have a choice to make, QD OLED or W OLED. Either way, you'll be taking the road less traveled and getting all the benefits that come with OLED technology, like pixel level illumination control and near instantaneous response time. Which type of OLED is the best depends on your viewing conditions and priorities. If you want beautiful bright colors, QD OLED is still top dog, despite LG's new RGB 10 panel giving it a run for its money. In a dark room, you won't see any issues with contrast or black level rays. So if you're really after the brightest and most saturated colors that OLEDs can offer in these conditions, it's QD OLED, at least for now. But if you tend to watch TV in a room with any ambient light, the black levels and reflection handling of W OLEDs makes them the best choice for brighter rooms. Ultimately, you need to ask yourself what matters most to you. While there are measurable differences, those differences become harder to quantify once you start considering real-world content and viewing conditions. For instance, how much of any given scene actually hits the peaks of brightness and saturation that are beyond what the latest WLS can achieve? On the flip side, how much does the black level rays on a QD OLED really matter if you only ever watch movies in a dark room at night with the blinds closed? The good news is that if you're buying a brand new OLED in 2025, it's pretty hard to go wrong. So, do you have an OLED? What type did you go with and why? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out the article on our website about the different OLED panel types. Until next time, I'm Marco from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best OLED for your needs. Like what we do and want to be part of it? Good news! We're looking to hire a new lead for our display team. Don't wait and apply today. The link is in the description below. But if you tend to watch TV in any room, in any room, no, 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 no. But if you tend to watch.